Hello, everyone, and welcome to 2021. Happy New Year, and welcome to uh, this latest Fifth Avenue Church broadcast. We're so happy to have you with us. For those that are with us, you're probably very aware at this point of our website, but just want to continue to remind you that's the best source of information for what is the latest with Fifth Avenue Church. So continue to uh, recommend that you make that a uh, regular uh, part of your calendar to check in with our calendar uh, for Fifth Avenue Church. If you're not yet part of our Facebook group, we also uh, have a uh, regular posts on that every week with the uh, newsletter, the e-newsletter. Those are great ways to stay connected with all that is going on. And we're just believing uh, along with you for a great 2021. And again, welcome to it. This is a perfect time for us as a family. There's really probably not a perfect time for us to share communion together. But as we begin this year in faith, this is a great opportunity for us. So I would encourage you at this point, if you want to just pause the broadcast and go and grab some elements, whether it be actual uh, wine or grape juice and uh, a fresh loaf of bread or uh, some kind of uh, variation of that, uh, then we will uh, partake of communion together. It'd be an honor to lead you uh, in these moments. Uh, we do really well as uh, not just as believers, but as humans with images. And uh, Jesus knew that with the stories that he was consistently telling us uh, while he was here and the stories that were left to us by the gospel writers and so on. And we do very well with images. And the Apostle Paul uh, talks about a lot of images as well, as well that really help us. And one of the images that really helps me uh, during my uh, quiet times with the Lord is just a simple candle. I remember years ago, uh, one of my leaders just challenging us to burn wax. And uh, so as we uh, spend time in prayer, just light the candle and watch the wax go down uh, in faith. And uh, one of the things that I have done in recent days is I use a candle handle similar to this one uh, that Pastor Tim uh, Burns here at the church office uh, with three wicks. And the Apostle Paul talks about the three things that remain, he gets us to the bottom line uh, of our following Jesus with faith, hope, and love. And so oftentimes I will, as I'm lighting these wicks, uh, just remind myself of these aspects of my life of following Jesus. The greatest of these is faith, hope, and ultimately love as I burn these candles. And as we partake of communion today, I just want to encourage us regarding our faith. Uh, when Jesus left this act of remembrance with us, uh, he didn't leave us, but he said that his presence would continually be with us. And as we light that wick of faith, uh, we're reminded every time we remember the completed work of Jesus that his presence remains with us. He truly is with us. And as we light that second wick of hope, uh, we uh, remind ourselves that regardless of the madness and the chaos that might be around us, and seemingly there's a lot. Uh, there was a lot in 2020, and here we are, and here we go again with some in 2021. But the hope that we have is that Jesus is with us and that Jesus is for us. And we have a hope that remains and a hope that is sure. And then we are also reminded and continually reminded by Jesus himself of the greatest of these as being love. Our ultimate agenda as followers of Jesus is to love the Lord with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourself. Our greatest calling begins as we spend time with Jesus, but as we also spend time with our neighbor next door. Jesus truly wants us as, as followers to be together, to be with him and to be with one another. And in the midst of this world that's not only chaotic, but extremely divisive, we have an opportunity to come together in faith and say we are together. Uh, we are together with our neighbors. We are together with our faith community. We are together with our Savior. And the ultimate bottom line of Scripture is a person, Jesus himself. There is faith. There is hope. There is love. But everything points to a person. And we continually go back to that person time and time again. Reg again, regardless of what has happened, regardless of what is happening now and regardless of what is to come, 
we continually remind ourselves in faith and continue to come back to in hope and continue to dwell in faith that we have a person that truly is with us and truly is for us. So as you take the bread, as you take the emblem, whatever that is today, we are reminded of the completed work of Jesus, of his body that was broken for us, the body that he has called us to partake in, and we remember what he has done as we partake of this together. And Jesus again said to his disciples on that, uh, on that Passover occasion, uh, they didn't understand, and oftentimes we don't understand. But he spoke words to them that would later not only be fulfilled, but would make a lot more sense when he talked about the blood that was shed for them and the continual commitment that our God has to us, not just to forgive our sins, but again, to dwell with us and to walk with us. And so as we, again, take this emblem representing uh, the shed blood of Jesus, we are reminded where our hope is as we partake together. Jesus, we're so thankful that not only have you not left us alone, and not only uh, are you for us, but you are active on our behalf. We're thankful that we can look to you for healing when we need healing. And there are many that have received, as I have, uh, desperately bad news that's requiring a miracle. And so we're asking you God of miracles and God of healing to step in and do the miraculous work of physical, emotional, relational healing. Uh, we live in a land that, in a country that is in need of healing, that is experiencing tremendous divisiveness, not just in these immediate days, but uh, for so many days of our history. And we ask for healing. We ask for healing of relationships, and we ask more than anything for your presence to continue to dwell with us. We're thankful that we can ask you in faith. We're thankful that we can walk in hope. And we're thankful that we can reach out in love because of you, Jesus. And we look to you in these moments. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Again, my privilege uh, to be with you today and my privilege to be able to hand off uh, uh, to uh, our good friend, uh, George Bomer, uh, who is going to come and going to bring the word today. Blessings on you all. <clears throat> good morning, everyone. Thank you, Jay. I appreciate you and Stacy, and appreciate Missy and Joel and Jessica and Tim and so thankful for all of them and their leadership and friendship during this time. And I'm thankful this morning that we get to read the passage of scripture that we're going to read. It's one of several passages that I come back to continually throughout my life. Uh, if uh, not at least once a year, many times during the year. And it seems like every time this passage is prophetic to the times that we live in. How will we respond in times of uncertainty, in times of the unknown, in times of vulnerability? Will we respond by trying to take control or will we respond to God's invitation to follow? And that's what's going on in this passage. This passage has to do with our identity. It has to do with the hope of new beginnings, new possibilities, new creation, new life. It's a passage that's not so much about us finding God, but about us responding to the God who has already found us. And it's a text that reminds us to take our eyes off of ourselves and to fix them on God. And as Jay alluded to, to see God's bigger picture and bigger purposes in the world. The title of my message is A Journey for All of Us. And in this passage, you'll actually see two journeys. One journey has to do with human manipulation and control. The other is birthed by the word of God. One journey ended in failure. The other was the beginning of a lifelong journey. And though there were struggles, 
it was the beginning of that journey. One was brash and confident with human resources and sought to make themselves great. The other was told to leave all of their resources and God would make their name get great. One vainly reached for heaven. The other discovered heaven reaching out. Both journeys, though, are trying to discover what it means to be human in this world and how do we respond in times of fear, the unknown, uncertainty, and vulnerability. And as we look at this passage out of Genesis 11 and Genesis 12 that was written 4,000 years ago, I believe the Holy Spirit will speak to us in 2021 and in this year. This passage and this couple, Abraham and Sarah, reverberate throughout the scriptures. The foundation of this looks forward to the rest of the scriptures, and then the majority of scripture is looking back to this passage that we'll look at. And Abraham and Sarah are pivotal people throughout the scriptures. The three great faiths look to them, and Jesus in his ministry, he uh, corrected some people about Abraham. Uh, they, they got a little too lofty about him. And Jesus said, before Abraham, I am. Don't forget that. But two really interesting, powerful, sweet episodes. One was when Jesus healed a woman on the Sabbath. And as we know, religious people don't, didn't like that at that time. And Jesus said, you know, you guys, why are you so bent out of shape? I'm sure that's the Greek translation. Why are you so bent out of shape? Um, you take care of your animals on the Sabbath. Why should I not heal this woman who is a daughter of Abraham? And then the great story of crooked Zacchaeus, who stands up at the dinner and repents. And at the end, Jesus said, salvation has come to this house for he too is a son of Abraham. Abraham and Sarah's journey begins at a critical point in the life of our planet. It's a pivotal point for human history. The question being addressed between Genesis 11 and Genesis 12 is, are things so bad that new creation, new life, new beginnings are impossible? Has the abundant grace of God been exacerbated and run out because God is fed up with humans. Quick overview to get us to our passage. Genesis 1 and 2, creation. God spoke and it's good. But then Genesis 3, a decision was made. There was distance between the humans and God. There was a distortion in their view of God. And there was a disruption in their life together. And Genesis 3 through 11, things went from bad to badder to worser. And that's where we start our passage in Genesis 11. Shame, fear, insecurity have begun to dominate the humans. Violence, distorted relationship, distorted views of God. Peace, people grasping at ways to find their purpose, their identity, and their security. So I want to read four verses out of Genesis 11 to set up the passage that we're going to read, the journey that we're all on. Um, as I read this passage, notice the emphasis on the people. Let us. And look what, notice what they're looking for. They're afraid of being scattered and they want to make a name for themselves. They're trying to reach up to the heavens. So Genesis 11.1, 1, now the whole earth had one language and one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there and they said to one another, come, let us make bricks. Let us bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone. They had asphalt for mortar. And they said, come, let us build ourselves a city. That's about community and a tower there's nothing wrong with wanting to build. That's about a creative purpose and about having a vision beyond your life. It's the way they go about it. A tower whose top is to the heaven and let us make a name for ourselves. That has to do with identity. Lest, and here's their fear, 
lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. They desired good things, community, purpose, vision, protection, a vision beyond themselves. But it was all about them. They said, let us make, let us build. They are the subject. And did you notice the subject who is missing in this passage? Well, he shows up in verse five and it says this, but the Lord, but the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which they had built. And of course, uh, we know the Lord confused their language and the very thing they feared uh, came upon them. They were scattered. So we're back to the question at the end of Genesis 11. Have humans made such a mess that there's no possibility of a new beginning or new hope? How, how can we get out of this mess? Have you ever felt like that, that you've made such a mess of things that there's no hope or no way out? I know I have. But thank God, this is not the ending. We're going to conclude for this New Year's message with a passage that sets in God's plan of new beginnings, God's plan of setting us on a journey. And it is a journey of new beginnings, and new beginnings can be a challenge. Uh, they're full of new possibilities, yes. They're full of new adventure, yes. But have you noticed when you start something new, you have to leave the familiar? There's new tests, new challenges, new vulnerabilities. So this journey, it's, it's fascinating. And it's the journey of all of us. Before we get to chapter 12, I just want to make one note a small little verse that we could overlook if you're reading this out of the end of 11. It says this, Then Abram took a wife, and the name of Abram's wife was Sarai. But Sarai was barren. She had no child. Barrenness is throughout the scripture, and barrenness is a metaphor for our human condition, that we don't have the resources that we need to generate life. But in original creation, out of the chaos and darkness, God spoke and a beginning happened. Out of new creation, where there are no resources, no possibilities of new birth, God speaks and new beginnings happen. One commentator said, Barrenness is the arena of God's life-giving action. When our own towers come tumbling down like the Tower of Babel, right there in the rubble, in the humility, in the darkness, in the confusion, new creation can take place. I think this is why Jesus' very first message was repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is not entered into full of our own resources. When my daughter was very little and I would try uh, when she was in her crib and I would want to give her a hug in the morning, before she would want a hug, she would have to pick up every one of her stuffed animals. And her hands and her little body were so full that there was no way that she could return the hug. And sometimes we hold on to things and Jesus says, repent. Admit that we don't have our act together. Um, everybody else already knows it, right? Tim, Jay know that I don't have my act together. I know they don't have theirs. And we all know we don't have our act together. The good news is repentance opens the door for receiving the kingdom. And it has to do with reorient. Re it has to do with focusing my life on God rather than on myself. That word just wasn't coming out. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. And here's where we'll conclude this morning. Notice the subject of this. 11, the subject's the people. The subject, now the Lord. The Lord is the subject. The Lord said to Abram, get out of your country, from your family, 
From your father's house to the land, I will show you. Leave the things that you would naturally hold on to for your identity, for your vision, for your purpose, for your security, and go to the land I will show you. No Google Maps, no directions, no iPhones, just to the land that I will show you. In other words, Abram, this journey starts, I'm calling the shots, not you. Now listen to this. And I, in 11, they were trying to make it. Here, repeated, the Lord says this, I will make you a great nation. That's community. That's God's vision. I will bless you. That's empowerment and resources. I will make your name great. That's our true identity. And you shall be a blessing. That's our creative purpose. And I will bless you. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. It's not just about one tribe. It's not just about holding on to the blessings, but it's about letting go. And then verse four, so Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him and Lot went with him. And Abram was retirement age, 75, when he departed. All the things that the people were looking for in Genesis 11, God now promises to Abram. Security, identity, adventure, community, blessing, significance, creative purpose, and being involved in a vision bigger than yourself. And notice this, Abram didn't do anything. The invitation to go and the invitation to receive the blessings was not because of his stature or his performance or his position. It was because of God's grace. Sometimes when we feel far from God, and I've talked to so many people who feel distant from God, and I've struggled with that. We think we need to do something and build our tower to get to God, but it's God's initiation and God's invitation. God creates the blessing. And you know what? Get this. God even gives us the grace to receive his grace. We get to respond to it. So this passage begins with this. Abram and Sarah departed. What a miracle. If it had been me, I might have said, you know, Lord, I think I'm good right here. I I have a little plot of land. I have my family. I've worked hard my whole life to attain this. But he and Sarah entered into that journey. That's the journey for all of us. Obviously, they didn't have complete understanding. If they had, they wouldn't have made it. God says to the land, I will show you. That's vague. This is the calling for you and for me. This is the calling of disciples. I am amazed as Jesus walked by. Leave your nets. Come follow me. Leaving something to follow. Abraham and Sarah were willing to step out into new possibilities. God asked them to leave things they would naturally look to. What things should we step out of from in 2021. Maybe we've gotten into some ruts. All of us do into some habits. We need to step away from that. Maybe we've begun putting our faith and security and trust in some of the wrong things and we need to step out of that. Maybe some unhealthy patterns and attitudes. I mean, all of us are struggling with our attitudes in these days. Have you noticed people are are angry and quick to react, but There's unhealthy attitudes and patterns that we need to step out of. And what about this one? Do we need to step away from always wanting to be in control and calling the shots? I like being in control. I like calling the shots. I know my good friend Tim does too. Maybe we get to step out of this this year. But not only stepping out of some things, maybe stepping into new possibilities maybe stepping away from some of the limitations we put on ourselves, maybe just moving into a deeper dimension of saying, God, I don't understand all that's going on in our world, but I'm going to trust you 
with my life, with my family, with my finances, with my future. Maybe stepping into loving the people who God has put into our lives. And Jay mentioned that in the communion time, loving one another, loving those who are not so nice, loving those who think differently from us politically or economically, loving those who don't root for the same football team that we do. Maybe we need to step in this year to forgiveness. We've been holding on to some things and it's time to forgive some people. Or maybe it's just thinking about others more than we naturally would and sharing the gifts that we have, sharing the mercy that you have, sharing the kindness that you have, sharing the resources that you have, sharing a listening ear. Stepping out of some things and stepping into some new possibilities for 2021. How were Abraham and Sarah able to do this? In Genesis 11, it was the people said. In Genesis 12, it begins with the Lord said. New creation, new possibilities, new journeys, entering into new dimensions began not with our word, but with God's word. Creation began with God said. New creation begins with God said. The Lord is inviting us through his word to step out, to begin, and to continue a journey of trust. How do we hear that word? Through the scriptures. But think in the scriptures all the different ways that people heard God. Moses heard God in a burning bush. The wise men heard God through a star. Balaam heard the Lord through a donkey. <laughs> and Elijah Heard the Lord not in the thunder, not in the clouds, not in the fire, but in a still, small voice. And of course, we know that all of creation is speaking to God. Proverbs invite us to hear the Lord through the ant. <laughs> Interesting. I haven't ever really tried that and got on the ground and followed an ant around and see what the Lord's speaking to me. But maybe this year. And of course, the word comes through great messages like this on a Sunday morning in 2021, right? I think for us, the takeaway is be listening. There's so much noise going on. And yeah, there's a lot of things we have to pay attention to that are important to our lives, to our families, to our nation. But listen to that still small voice this year. Quiet ourselves for just a moment. How else did this journey happen for Abram and Sarah? Well, it happened imperfectly. When I uh, was young and studied Abram and Sarah, I thought they were the models of perfection for us to follow. And one day I was studying and I had finished studying their lives and I realized they messed up at every step of the way. They did it imperfectly. I'm thankful for that because all of us do it imperfectly too. That's why it's so important for us to encourage one another. We all make mistakes. We don't want to, but we do. We need one another's encouragement. They did it imperfectly, but they also faced new challenges, trials, and obstacles. So they had to do it with perseverance. New beginnings aren't for the faint of heart because there's new challenges. Um, and perseverance is needed. It's one thing to start. It's another thing to continue. How else did they do it? They did it imperfectly. They did it facing new challenges, but they did it with God's help every step of the way. And when you read the full array of their life, you will see that maybe God didn't help them all the times that they wanted it, but God helped them every time that they needed it. God was faithful to Abram and Sarah, and God will be faithful to you and to me. Two final notes. As the people in Genesis 11 held on to their lives, they lost what they were trying to gain. As Abraham let go and began a journey, imperfect journey, not knowing everything, following God, he found what he was really looking for and who he really was. And lastly, I'm just reminded that 
God blessed Abraham, and God is blessing you and me. But these blessings are not for us. They are like gifts that we are supposed to re-gift. God loves re-gifting, and it's the kind that we, can never, we don't have to be ashamed of. Give the gifts that God has given you away in the ways that you can. Um, that'll be a powerful thing. And we get to invite others to come on this journey with us. Well, let's say a prayer together. And I, I'm really thankful that I could be here this morning. And I hope that this message touches your heart as much as it's uh, touched mine. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, forgive us for the times that we try to build our own structures and control and we make life all about us. Remind us that we don't have to build our way to heaven, but you have come down to us in the person of Jesus Christ and you live in us through the Holy Spirit. And Lord, thank you for the grace to receive that. And wherever all of my uh, friends, my brothers and sisters are at this morning, I pray, Lord, that we could step out in this new journey, holding on to you, following you as your word calls us. Lord, thank you for loving us first. Bless this church. Amen. Well, thanks for this morning. I hope you have a great rest of the day and a good week. And uh, Pastor Tim will be uh, sharing next week. Take care.